go to the chapel and we're gonna get married go into the hello chapel. and welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is serena and today we're going to be sewing up a 1950s inspired wedding dress why you ask i've been reducing how much i've been spending and sewing through my stash and now we've gotten to the point where i have lots of pretty lace tool and cotton sateen and i want to go ahead and get that out the closet and turn it into something very beautiful i did not get the opportunity to make my own wedding dress because i didn't know how to sew at the time so i thought this would be a really cool project to make we are pretty close to my eighth wedding anniversary that's coming up in a couple weeks and i more importantly i wanted to do like a vintage bridal shoot with my classic car i have a 1960s corvair and while that is nowhere near ready to drive or even photo shoot I figured I'd work ahead and make my dress anyway. I saw this beautiful dress on Instagram and I figured I could recreate it with the supplies I already have in my sewing room. We're going to be using Gertie's Lana bodice for the top and then we're going to pair it with the night and day yoke skirt for the bottom. Um, so if you are interested in seeing me sew up a wedding dress, then stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And now let's get into the materials. I used a very heavy embroidered off-white lace with gold detail for the lace portions of the dress. I also used a cotton sateen as the backing for everything to sit on. It's a nice breathable material. And then I used a regular white tool I thought the off-white and then the bright white would look really nice together, a cute contrast. And if you would like links to all of the materials that I use, I do post a shopping list over on Patreon. So become a bobbin and shop the exact materials that I used for this project. To start off, I am cutting out the side back yoke pieces and I'm also going to cut out the center yoke pieces out of my cotton sateen. This will act as a backing to the lace so that it is not see-through. So after this, I cut out the same pieces on my lace. Next, I'm going to put the overlay on top of the underlay of cotton sateen, and then I'm going to baste it all together on the sewing machine. This makes it so that way the two pieces act as one from here on out, and the dress itself will not be see-through. I will repeat this process on the center front of the skirt since I only want the flat, smooth, non-gathered sections to have this lace. At this point, I'm super excited for this dress because I just love that fitted section in the front. I think it's so pretty and overall gives the dress kind of like a faux or mock pencil skirt in the center. You'll see what I mean later. So here I am combining those side back pieces to the front yoke section. If you haven't already, don't forget to like this video if you're enjoying it and subscribe to my channel for more. Also for extra content, you can become a bobbin over on Patreon. A couple months ago, I kind of previewed or hinted this project and went into the details of me planning and so on. So for more sneak peeks and things of that, join my Patreon and further support this channel. Now that the lace sections of the skirt pretty much completed, it's time to start seaming the underskirt and I'm using French seams for this process. There is so much gathering in this project, lots of tulle. So I'm using my cotton sateen as a base fabric and you could go with a cotton, like a standard cotton fabric, depending on how you decide to attach the skirt to the project. Um, the way that I'm attaching mine, you will be able to see the under fabric. Um, so I decided to go with a cotton sateen because I think it will look nicer because the tool will shift in such a way that you can see the sateen underneath. Once I have all of my pieces seamed together, it's time to start gathering the upper edge of the underlay. I'm doing this manually with an extra long basting stitch, but if you want extra fluff, then you can just cut out extra long rectangles and then use your ruffler foot attachment to get extra volume. But because this is a yoke and it's gonna be sitting below the waist and more on the hip, I thought that too much gathering might be a little bit too much, um, just a little bit too extra. 
However, if you're doing like a full length, like ball gown style skirt, I think if it was floor length, it would look really nice with the extra volume, like the over the top princess volume. But considering uh, mine is almost T length, I think that it needed a little less. For the seam finishes, we are going with the French seam because I think it's just the nicest seam finish. And then also, since this is technically a wedding dress, I thought it would be the more couture or pretty fancy way to um, complete a dress. It's what I assume a wedding dress finish should be. So I am doing that now, I'm cutting off the seam allowance. And I will link in the cards a tutorial on my favorite or my most used seam finishes and it will have like a full length tutorial on how to do a proper French seam. So check that out after this video. Once the under layer of the skirt is complete, it's time to start gathering tulle. And I just cut long rectangular strips of tulle to the length that I wanted it to be. And I just started gathering as much as possible because I knew I wanted this to be a layered skirt. I was unsure of how many layers of tulle I wanted to go with. So I just gathered all of the tulle that I had and then I pinned it on the dress form to get an idea of how many layers I wanted. And this is what the different layers looked like. I went with three layers. How many would you have picked? Now it's time to attach all of the layers to the skirt and I'm working with the skirt while it's completely open. Um, the zipper goes onto center back so that's why I have it completely open now. So first I'm going to attach the tool from that corner to the center back only. I will not be sewing down the side front with the tool layer and I'll show an example on the side, see how the tool is free flowing, but I do have the cotton sateen attached to the side front. That's exactly how I want to do the other side. So in order to do that, I'm going to sew the tool down first, only connecting it from the upper left to the upper right and working in sections makes it so much easier to control where the tool ends up being because you don't want to accidentally catch it in the seams. This is why it was important for me to use a cotton sateen because it would show, but as I said earlier, you can get away with using a more simple cotton. You'll just have to attach the tool to the center seam. And last, before we move on, in order to sew up the center back seam, you're gonna treat each layer as its own layer. So you're gonna sew up the under layer of cotton sateen by itself right sides together and then you're going to do that with each individual layer of tool as well stopping at where the zipper attaches before sewing you want to mark the pivot points on the pattern so i just use a hole punch to cut that out and make those marks on my fabric and i use tailor tack to do that and so now it's time to sew the tool on. And as you can see, I am just sewing the tool from left to right, stopping at that corner. Another tip for working with this tool is I gathered two of the layers of tool together as one. So um, instead of gathering all three layers separately, I only gathered um, one strip of tool separately. So that way I didn't have too many raw edges just like moving around and stuff. So I just put two layers of tool on top of each other, gathered it down and then added the third on top. So here is just some of the bodice um, that will have an overlay. I will have to cut this two more times, one for the interlining and one for the lining. Um, and then I have to do all the cut pieces as well. The cups will not have any of the overlay. I actually want the sateen to shine on the cups. The first time I made this bodice was over Christmas when Gertie first released this pattern or around Christmas time. Um, she released this pattern and I was shook at how many pieces brought this bodice together. I can't remember exactly how many pieces, but I think it was somewhere around like 20 pieces for the bodice. Um, and it's been a while since I actually filmed this to now where I'm editing. And I have since started adding foam cups into my strapless bodices. Um, I feel like it looks better that way so this does not have those cups built into it um this is actually the dress that inspired me to start doing that because i don't like how saggy the underbust is uh, so after this point months later 
I started adding some cups in. And if you watched my very last video from last week, making a Western outfit, you saw me do that process. So I've since changed my process since making this dress. Um, I'm always learning. Also, I did not have the sagging in the first version of this dress that I made because I had more interfacing in it. The reason I reduced the interfacing on this one was because I needed to add that extra layer of lace and I was trying to reduce some of the bulk in the bodice. Either way, I could probably get some external foam pads that I can stitch into the lining of this dress after the fact. So now I am attaching the bodice to the skirt and it is nearly done. I'm really excited for this. I haven't yet decided how exactly I want to style this for photos later on when we get the Corvair running because I would love to take some super cute retro looking wedding photos with the Corvair. So I haven't decided exactly what kind of veil or hat or fascinator that I would want to wear with this. Um, so this will be continued later on. Um, so I'm just going to do like a simple reveal of the overall dress and design. Um, but if you have any suggestions on what type of headgear <laughs> accessories I should wear with this, drop them below. I'm super interested to see what you guys think. This is the dress without a petticoat. In the final shot, I do end up wearing a tiered A-line petticoat, but I think for the photo shoot, I will make a new petticoat where the panel in the front is flat, similar to the dress. As you can see here, since the petticoat doesn't match the silhouette of the dress, it is causing a little bit of a wrinkle at the hip in the front, so I will correct that later. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, as well as follow me over on Instagram at Serena underscore. You can leave me a virtual tip over on Ko-fi and become a bobbin over on Patreon. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.